You're listening to Inside Real Estate, your source for all things mortgage and real estate related. The show that brings you all the hottest topics and insights directly from those who know it most. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Yo, what is up, everyone? I don't know what in there. We're, you know, we're still trying to figure this up. Uh, how's everybody doing today? My name is Paul Apostolakis. We've got Salvatore Cusmano. We have Brad Weisgerber. We are the trio of inside real estate. We all have COVID haircuts that we all did ourselves or, or had people do it for us. Seth's got a bouffant. Is that what they call it? A bouffant? <laughs> uh, and you've got, I don't know. Brad's got the Caesar. You want Caesar, Brad Caesar. <laughs> Uh, and I went Greek. I went full Greek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So today, I mean, we we have a. I'm always ex- like we had Mark Z on an episode before. For those of you that don't know Mark, you know, nationally that that are listening, uh, Mark here locally in Metro Detroit uh, has done a really good job with his business. Uh, he does an, He's an amazing marketer. He's done. Everybody in the area knows him. He's got a jingle on the radio that you can't get out of your fucking head. It's like there. It's like the Z guarantee. <laughs> Remember, Sal, you, your buddy had done that? Yeah, that was awesome. I did. <laughs> so, uh, Sal has uh, a pizza cut. What? <laughs> what is that? It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. A pizza cut. So, uh, let's bring Mar- everybody. So, just real quick, uh, before we start the show, obviously, thank you everyone for going to our website, irepodcast.com. Thank you all for, uh, and if you haven't, obviously, go like our page on Facebook, it's forward slash IRE podcast. Uh, any podcast app that you have we're on it so we appreciate all the support send us a message we always lo- love to respond to them so um for, for without further ado let's bring on the man the myth the legend himself mr mark z yo what up dog what's going on how are you bro are you? look at that beard ah, so yeah, mark you know also what, has uh, the covid it's part mark of that has the covid cut Part of that quarantine life, you know, you got to take the hair wherever it comes in. <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to ask about the rest of your body then. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. This, this, this isn't their podcast. <laughs> even though so, I don't sell tickets, um, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, right? There. So, Mark, obviously, you've done a really good job. So, like, if you talked about your past and your we, we did that last time you're on the show. So, if anybody wants to know about Mark's past or how he got into the business, I did a really good episode and we, we talked about that today. I, I just want to focus on, you know, our market today, um, what you're feeling and seeing and how you're uh, mitigating or navigating these waters right now in, in this really weird time where, you know, up is down and down is up and things kind of don't make sense. So, a big thing that happened for Michigan last week was, Real estate opened up on Thursday, which, you know, I don't think real estate ever closed, but realtors could actually go out and show houses. So I want to talk to you about what your mentality was going into that day. What, what, what are you guys thinking about doing now going forward? And and from a marketing standpoint, you know, how, how do you navigate that? But let's go with the first question. So when when uh, real estate opened up, in your mind, what did that, what did, what did that mean to you, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, leading up to that, there was just so many unknowns. Uh, you know, up until this point in my career, you know, I've been I've been in the business 17 years. So, I, I I would have liked to have thought that I've seen it all and I've I've been through it all. And then, yeah. just when you think that, life comes yeah. up and just smacks you in the head, right? It says, no, 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 no. You haven't seen it all. You haven't been through it all. And, and it happens in everyone's lifetime, right? Um, yeah. But but we had a feeling based on based on the statistics, based on on history, you know, you you try to line up all the dots, all the pieces of the puzzle and try to put an educated guess as to what was going to happen. We were preaching the whole time for the last eight weeks that you better be ready. You better have some uh, some legs underneath all your chairs to be able to handle what's coming when this thing opens up, because, you know, look, the mortgage and and the real estate industry, we've been around for 90 years. Right. We've been around a long time. It's something that that people always need. Um, and so when you go two months of that backlog of, of nothing happening, something's gotta make up for that lost time because those people don't just go away. Those people that had to buy and had to sell, they're 
they're back on the forefront again, right? They they have to do yeah, it. But now yeah, we yeah. got we got those people from from March, April, and May, all in May, and now we have yeah. So we have triple the amount of people, demand, right? Yeah. So you've got to have almost a team around you. You've got to have some people that are going to be able to help you because otherwise, how are you going to make up for lost time? And I don't know about you guys, but that's a, I'm not trying to just stay status quo and just finish out the year. You know, I'm right. trying to I'm trying to do nine months of business in six months. You know, so my numbers still yeah. add up yeah. at the end of the year. Um, yeah. So that means you're going to need more people. Right. And if you don't have yeah. more people around you, um, I don't think you're going to be able to get your unfair share. I think someone else is that has the proper setup and has the proper team in place. You know, if, if you're a solo agent, think about this. You know, if you're a solo agent and normally you show one or two buyers on a Saturday, what are you going to do when you have five or six buyers that want to show homes that want to see homes on a Saturday and Sunday? You That's a really good point, man. That's a really good point. So, you know, it's the power of leverage. You know, if you're a loan officer um, and, and you're normally doing, you know, five or 10 deals, do you have the team surrounding you that can support you, the back office that can support 20, 30 deals? Because that business is out there for the taking. It's just a matter of, yeah. are you ready for it? Do you have the support and the leverage to be able to take advantage of that? I don't know. Some do, some don't. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, that is, that's interesting, Sal, because we talk about that because I don't think we could do re realistically, right? Like I'm handling no. a lot of the, the business development. No here. Like, we're we're all kind of, of, I mean, it, all this takes time, right? And all this takes focus and it takes a lot of uh, human interaction and one person can only do so much. So you have to figure out how to uh, add in to complement what you do, right? With, with other great people. So, you know, it's uh Cause in the end, I mean, it has to be a great experience too. And that's the, the other part, right? So good people, good teams equal good results, right? And referrals. And as long as things go smooth, I mean, that's kind of what breeds success, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Mark, when you, when you think about the team holistically, what are the pieces? I mean, obviously how big is your team now? Just from numbers standpoint. Man, we've probably got about 55, 60 people on the team now. That's huge, dude. Yeah, yeah, so, we've grown a lot. And and they're all agents, right? You've got a lot of support, right, on the back end. That's kind of your thing where you're, you, you're doing volume, obviously, but you need to have the team to be able to keep the service levels up for your clients too, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, we've got a, we've got a great support team. Um, you know, and, and we in 17 years, we've screwed it up in every way you can imagine, right? People see, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people see what yeah. you see now and, and think, wow, you know, that's great, but... You know, we, we've only gotten to the point we got because we screwed it up more than anybody else. You know, in the most yeah. successful companies in the world, one thing you're going to find in common is nobody screwed up more than them. That's that's how you yeah. learn, right? Yeah. You, you got to make mistakes, dude. I, I always say that when, when I have an agent or a loan officer or whatever, they make a mistake. It's like, dude, good. If you're not making mistakes, you're not trying, right? Yeah. That's really the yeah. way it works. Not, yeah. No, as long as you remember them. You know, I mean, that's the, from the other part. I mean, when you see someone make the, uh, the same mistake a couple of times, you have to question whether they're uh, cut for this business. You know, it's like, hey, dude, like, yeah. you, you can't do that again or you're gone. You know, yeah. like, uh, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, that's what makes you who you are. Right. Especially the ones that really sting. Like, for example, as a loan officer, if I mess a deal up and burn a relationship with an agent, I mean, that to me, that's like traumatizing. Right. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know I have. Everybody has. Everybody's been to six. Mark, so I, I, the weird thing about our, our industry, Mark, is that, that it's so antiquated in the sense that, you know, it's it's funny. I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, our industry is the most uh, advanced and the most like not, not advanced at the same time. Like you like there's a lot of agents because you still make a living and not have to be progressive in your thought mm -hmm. process and, and business practices. And you can still, you know, be an Antillian deal a month or two, pretty good living. I don't think that's going to be the same going forward because you have to kind of embrace the evolution of our industry, which is happening at a rapid pace now due to which the COVID thing. And because we don't have a choice anymore but to evolve, what do you think that evolution looks like? And what happens to those real estate agents that are still writing handwritten PAs or that don't have the processes or the technology to help them through this for their client? I mean, I feel like client clients have a different appetite. So I, what 
what do you think is going to happen to this breed of, of agents and maybe the guard maybe that we, we talk about and the switch over to the new guard like what what, what do you think is going to happen to that group yeah i mean you know we're witnessing the the entire industry evolve um you know when i got in the industry years ago uh, we never bought leads right leads all came yeah. to you organically um so you're witnessing uh you know in this whole virtual you know we we've, we've gone virtual the past eight weeks um you know my brokerage in particular um i'm not here to plug the brokerage but you know we're a virtual brokerage so it's almost like we were built for this we have yeah. a virtual world that we operated in before corona so it wasn't something that we had to that was one thing we did not have to pivot and adapt to because we were already there yeah. right um we we predicated that you know, the industry was going more and more virtual. So um, that was one thing that, you know, a lot of my friends in the industry were all scrambling how to stay in touch with their agents, uh, brokerages, how do you stay in touch? And, you know, everybody jumped on Zoom. Um, Zoom's great. You know, we, uh, uh, I take that back. Zoom was Zoom great. sucks, dude. I'm, I'm so sick of Zoom. <laughs> oh my God. I'm Zoomed out, bro. I'm Zoomed out. I want oh human interaction. I want to like, I want to feel someone's breath on me again. <laughs> oh my God. Right? Yeah. So that is disturbing. You know, but you know, yeah. you can see these eye buyer. The, um, you know, something new that's uh, newer that's been popping up is the whole eye buyer platform, right? That's that's evolving. Yeah. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's coming on strong. Every third party site has, uh, as an iBuyer platform, right? Um, All of them, yeah. And that's something you're gonna have to embrace. Um, you know, I see that coming coming strong um, in the same respect that people, because you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, like yourself, I mean, would you let someone buy your house for cash if I asked you that right now? Would you? Are you that guy? Yeah, sure. If they wanna buy cash, yeah, but at my price. At your price, you, you're probably not going to take the cash offer, the typical investor cash offer, right? No, okay. no, because it, yeah, not not at all, not at all, right? Yeah, because the iBuyer platform, by the way, just so everybody knows, they're like, oh, we're going to cut out. First of all, they lowball your house, so that you, yeah. you know it's like you're you're getting in and out, and there's still like six, seven, eight, like eight percent fees sometimes on these iBuyer platforms. On the they don't call it commissions, but they call it like administration fees and whatever it is you end up walking away spending the same amount of money you know in some certain cases more money works, in but some cases yeah. yeah so and you probably won't get as much for your house so in your point Mark, i i think That's, it's innovative i i don't think you're placing the real estate in, in today's market no. yeah i mean you know during this pandemic all of these third-party sites all backed off right they're like oh program's done we're not doing that anymore you know and that's where you know realtors realtors are still there to get the home sold so during during times like that that program goes away now you just said that's probably not something you would do because you're not in that situation however i want you to take that a little bit deeper and i want you to 30 40 years ago when you went to go trade in a car that didn't exist right you'd have to sell your car yourself okay sure, there was a yeah. time mm -hmm. now if you have a car you take it to the dealer you go to the dealership to buy a new car do you more times than not trade in that car take whatever they give you because that's yeah. just it, it's easy right it's easier. And then you go yeah and you yeah. just buy the new car now Unless would you have more money if you sold it on your own yeah you will would you, you? more money if you sell it. yeah yeah you, you'd make more money if you sell it on your own for sure but you're not but you're not going through that headache right you're not going home putting it for sale trying to time it right yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. Know, sell your sell yours because you need the money from that in order to buy the new one. You're not going through all that, yeah. right? Let me tell you something. This new millennial generation, this new younger generation, they're not about the hassle. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to deal yeah. with. They're about convenience. Yeah. So you're going to see as this evolves more and more. You know, it's like everything. You're going to have to find a way to work with it because more and more people are going to take that not everybody just like not everybody trades in their car but i do believe that there's going to be a market big enough that it's going to be common enough that it's going to have to be something that you find a way to work with because it's it's not going away convenience is the way that this entire world is evolving and although you say i would never take that price if i could tell you hey up or down five percent ten percent you get the offer, you go find your home. It's a simple trade. 
you're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You might think yeah. twice. And if you don't, your wife, your wife, your wife might talk you into, honey, this is so easy. Let's right? get out well, of here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of brokerages that do that right now, right? We're like, well, if we don't sell it, we'll buy it. Right. Yeah. And if that's yeah, we do it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Not a bad deal, right? I mean, think about it, right? Like, okay, your goal is to move, right? And some people are like, Well, you know, if I make money in my house, I don't really care. I just want to get into the next one. So if they're going to lose 10, 15 grand on, on the sale, but be able to still put down minimum down, like, you know, 5% or whatever on the next house and get into it and have the security of selling their home before they need to close on their new one. It's not bad. I I'd do that. You know? I mean, gr- it's a, I've never heard it put in that way. Like me the analogy yeah, of, of the car, it's, it's kind of eye opening because Right. It, it makes, makes a lot of sense. Of Sign these papers. I would do that. Exchange yeah, keys that close. You're good to go. You have 10 days to move. Yeah. Okay. Well, everything's going to evolve in one way or the other. But I, there's for me personally, Mark, and, I, and you can disagree with this. I don't think, I think a real estate transaction is emotional. It's nuanced. There's a lot of moving parts. And especially for a first time home buyer or someone that needs a professional, uh, ad, like an advisor. Uh, they're gonna want have that. Some, I think the marriage has to be between both, right? It can't just be all the way to one yeah. side. So as an agent, you have to have the whole repertoire of of options, right? And I think, like uh, to Mark's point, like who wants to go through that? You know, like I don't. Yeah. A lot of people, are like, Dude, I just want to move. I don't care. I don't. I don't yeah. want to sell my house. Oh. I don't want people walking through it, especially in this environment, right? You want fifty people going through your house when right. the new era could be like it. You know, let's say coronavirus ends. I mean, there might be another pandemic. There might always be now a fear in the back of people's mind of of human interaction to a degree, right? So, not that that's going to be widespread, I, I don't think. But ultimately, being able to make it easy and yeah, it costs a little more money. But dude, I mean, it's a bitch to sell a car, you know, on your own. I, I just go trade it in. I know on I'm your own, make, yeah. You know, and granted, it's not as big of an investment, but like. No, it's just, it's a nightmare, man. I think uh, that companies, these third party, party companies wouldn't be doing it if they didn't see a future in it. And they got big bucks behind it. So they're, yeah. they're calculated. These are like hedge funds, dude. They got people who are like graduated schools that we wouldn't even be allowed on campus calculating these numbers and figuring out the, the deltas of risk and all that, right? Like they know what's up. So. Absolutely. And just like right now, I mean, does everybody trade in their car? No. If you go to autotrader.com, there's millions of for sale by owner cars, uh, you know, that people are trying to sell on their own. Right. And I'm not saying that the entire industry is just going to flop to that. It's never going to happen. Right. You're still going to have the people who want to use a realtor, who see the value in it, who want to get the most amount of money possible. And, And that's how you do maximize the most amount of money is to have, you know, a realtor, no doubt about it. Um, you're not going to get taken advantage of. You're not going to have the legal problems that you might have on your own. There's there's a lot of advantages, no question. But if 25% of the transactions get pulled out of the pot, it's going to affect the industry. So what I'm oh, saying yeah. is you're going to have to bring extreme value to the transaction. You're not going to be That's able to it. be a paper pusher. You're not going to be able to be that agent you were five years ago because the public doesn't need you like they did five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, 30 years ago, there was no MLS, right? The client right, waited right. for Monday for the new listings to be delivered to every brokerage office. And then you met, went and met with your broker to see all the new listings. That's how needed that broker was, was right. Now things have evolved. Yeah. 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 You're so, not finding my house today. Yeah, I'm gonna look at Zillow. I'm gonna, I'm the robots are taking right? all our jobs. I mean, let's be honest, right? <laughs> a loan officer, how a loan officer, a good loan officer is very valuable right now in navigating the absolute minefield of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, USDA, Jumbo, investor guidelines, right? Like that's what kind of makes a good LO a good LO is understanding all the nuances up front. But with the evolution of technology and the availability to go completely dock this and pull in everything and have computer systems read, you know, tax returns and they come in and, hey, man, you're approved, like 100%. All you need is, is an appraisal. If it comes in, we're good. Like, what value can you add above and beyond that? Obviously, someone who knows what they're talking about and explaining, but lots of other people are going to get cut, right? And a lot 
more deals will have to be done by loan officers because the technology will be available to them. Like one, one loan officer will be able to do a lot more deals with the added technology. And I think on the same end with real estate, right? Like one real estate agent could do, <laughs> one real estate agent could do a lot more deals with this added technology. Like let's say like virtual listings. Hey, you're just going to sit at your desk and do consults potentially all day with people, right? And show them Absolutely. the homes virtually. Yeah. It, it, listen, that's how you're going to get an offer accepted. I just had a call this morning with, uh, with my team. And right now, you guys know, we're dealing with multiple offer situations all over again, right? I all mean, it's, yeah. it's worse than it's ever been. And, and part of getting, part of my advice was in getting the offer accepted was you've got to involve that loan officer. That loan officer has got to call that listing agent and secure that deal telling them, hey, listen, we've vetted the buyer. We've went through, and, and you yeah. know as well as I do, not every loan officer vets a buyer like they should. Some Correct. of them, you know, that paper, that paper is not most worth anything. Most of them don't. Most of most them don't. don't. You, you said it, not terrible. me. Yeah, you said yeah, it, not me. Yeah, most of them suck. But, 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 you know, to, to be a loan officer and have that reputation that, um, that listen, if I put my name on a pre-approval, we're going to the closing table. That paper means right? something, right? Yeah, yeah. That paper means something. And that's bragging rights when yeah. you can tell the listing agent, listen, I've got my preferred lender on, on the uh on the hook for this and we've never not closed the deal. He issues a pre-approval, yeah. we're going to the closing table. As a listing agent in a multiple offer situation, you know, everybody's concentrating on that price. A lot of times in a bidding war, the price is the same relatively up or down a couple thousand dollars here and there, right? You gotta it's close. Not, it's not the price. That listing agent wants to know, we're gonna get to the closing table. So how important mm -hmm. is that loan so officer? That loan Fair officer is, yeah, yeah. is the key to the deal. And so, you know, I think as a loan officer, you know, if, if we're not coaching the agent to involve you in the deal, let me get this offer accepted. Let me call that listing agent. Let me email them and tell them, hey, we vetted the, the we vetted the bank statements, uh, you know, employment, blah, 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 blah. This buyer is good to go. You know, it's a team. So that loan officer is yeah. everything in a transaction, at least the way I see it in today's world. And Mark, world, you as a listing sure. agent, you want the same thing, right? As a listing agent, when you get approval, let's say hypothetically, right? Let's say you get it from uh, a local guy or whatever company that you feel good about. And then there's another one from Chase or Bank of America and these these other places are kind of hard to deal with sometimes because it's like so bureaucratic, right? Right. When you have two offers and they're similar, you're going to advise your client, listen, I, I know Slender. I know they perform. I don't, this Slender they've been known not to perform even if it's 5k higher i don't like this 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 offer because they suck listen at the end of the day um do you remember what you which when was the last time you sold a home let me ask you this uh three years ago three years ago Four, do you five remember? years ago sorry five years, five ago. years ago sorry do you remember what you sold your home for i don't even know the fucking number not okay. a chance Okay. And if you did, would it have mattered if you got two grand less or three grand less? No, 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 no. You're pitching and, pennies and, at that point. I want to close it. And to the listing agents, they don't care if it's up or down a thousand two thousand dollars because at the end of the day, they got to get that deal closed. That's what's more important. They can't go back on the yeah. market. They can't go back on and start the process all over again. And their seller's got a house in mind that they're supposed to close on X amount of days. That deal's got to close. So that's yeah. what's and important. And here's the deal, Mark. And here's the deal, Mark. And Brad and Sal, you guys know this. In today's world, in today's world with, with the, the lending conditions, the, the restrictions that we're starting to get, uh, the employment verification situations, uh, it's, in my opinion, obviously I'm biased, but it is more important than ever, 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 ever to have a proficient loan officer or lender on the other side of that transaction because there's so many things that can you up in today's market things that we that are coming out daily things change hourly right now right you know what i mean who you got you got it you got to go mark yeah. you got, you got, no no someone was just talking <laughs> joy's working from oh, home okay <laughs> i think uh Wait one second guys go ahead keep going yeah yeah, yeah, I, think, yeah I mean Sal, what do you, I mean, well, I think it looks like you're in heaven. <laughs> I know something's going on. Well, I think <laughs> I mean, the, the fun keeps moving, you know, but the, uh, yeah, yeah. All, all these are valid points and have been valid points and are always something that I, I think everyone has to be aware of, right? People got to do their job. But what I'm saying, uh, to a degree and, and whether it's real estate, mortgage, car sales, this or that, we have to adapt 
and change with what's coming. Like I said, if and when I should say the technology is on point to actually make doing a mortgage much easier and faster, right? Like I'm saying that the implementation of that, like loan officers have to find a different way to add value, just like a real estate agent right now. Why would you take an iBuyer? You put it on the market, it's nuts. But when that market's just not if, right? And that the supply is more than the demand, equal at demand, which I don't, I don't know how long that will be, you know, no, before that happens. Yeah, we got a possible buy issue for sure. But it, I'm sure at some point, whether it's now or 2030, right? Or wh- whenever that will happen. And at that point, the iBuyer might be very attractive, right? And it might be something that agents have to deal with. And like I said, as a loan officer, your value diminishes potentially when there's other things that you have to deal with, like uh, increased and better technology, which isn't a bad thing, right? But something that uh, agents and you know anyone in this business will understand that like you have to figure out how to still be that that voice of of communication, but deal with the process, right? Like maybe you can get, you have to, you have to find, you have to find ways to add more value, man. Yeah. The value proposition is moving. It's a moving target, right? Mm -hmm. And it's changing. I mean, right uh, now, even with the COVID, I mean, guys, what do you guys feel about, you know, before this happened, people were talking about uh, corrections coming, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've had a long bull market. What what are we going on? 10 years now? Yeah. Right. 10 years? The longest longest period of expansion in the history of, of the United States, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's probably more inevitable than ever that, you know, we probably have a correction coming up on the horizon. Is it going to be like 07, 08? Is it going to be a 5 10% correction? What do you guys feel like is coming up, uh, you know, after the dust well, settles? I'll give you my opinion. My opinion is yeah. we've, got, we've, we've got some weird things happening, right? So right cool. now there's – we're having unemployment issues, right? People aren't, there's a, there's a population of people that can't buy or, or, or sell or whatever it is, or refinance right now. Right. Right. Um, but because the, 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 the home prices, I think are going to maybe see some places see, see a 5% correction, but I think it'll hold steady right now for cousins supply. There's not a lot of supply. Um, and the, the, the appetite's still there. We're seeing the appetite and two, this low trade market, it's going to be for a little while, man. And if you can, if if you are ever going to buy a house, right, and you can borrow money at two point seven five or three percent and get into a house at three percent, you're going to get the cheapest money potentially, unless there's another, like unless we go completely like ballistic. These are probably going to be some of the lowest rates we ever see, maybe two and a half, whatever. But you're going to have a rate in the twos or threes, and that's going to drive because that, that the price of money is so cheap. You, you know what I'm saying? And then if right. the problem is if rates are higher. People that are living in houses at three percent, they're not moving, right? But if rates are low, they don't feel as 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 conflicted getting out of that deal, right? Because of that low interest rate. So I think the fact the supply issue, and also don't forget the demand's going to increase because we have these millennials right now. They're going to start having babies. There's a huge population of millennials. So personally, I think that home prices will see an adjustment. I think it's max five percent, maybe seven percent. But overall, if you buy a house today and you stay in it for five years, you're going to make money on it, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think how, you're going to have a correction. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think we're going to see the 07, 08. I don't think we're we're in that kind of uh, uh, financial ruins. Uh, you know, I, the government's a combination of the government stepped up. I think people have a lot more money. People learn from 07, 08. People aren't over leveraged. Um, yep. You know, I think a lot of good things came out of that that market. Um, when I was looking at it how much prepared us for this, yeah, absolutely. I, you guys know this more than anybody, but I feel like people got, uh, based on, on the graphs I've seen, people got a lot more equity. Uh, you mm-hmm. guys would know this more than I would, but when you guys are seeing people come and refinancing, do you feel like they've got a lot more That's equity, a lot, right? In 07, there was no equity. everybody was underwater, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, yeah. right now right. I think, you know, 08 brought us a, a shift of compliance that was needed, right? To set up like safe and uh, uh, responsible lending guidelines, right? This is going to be a shift, I think, in technology and the way business is done, right? The yeah. evolution of uh, being able to close a loan in, in seven days and never leave your house, never go to a title company, never even see a notary, right? Being able to do everything over the, the internet is going to 
really change the speed and probably the frequency of which things are done, which causes issues in, in the market. But uh, I think that as long as, and you know, something to think about too, is just the population of, of the United States, right? Like more, when you, and you would probably know this more, Mark, like once you own a home, what are the chances that you don't own a home, own a home again in your life until you're dead? Like, do you like, you, Oh, you're saying like, if you buy a house and then all of a sudden you go rent, well, don't go rent after that. And normally yeah. if you buy a house, long term, you probably, house. Right? And you're going to go end up probably buying a condo, right? If right. you're going to retire and you're going to do this. So those homes are still owned by people, right? Whether they, but there's a new buyer in the market and it's a huge population, a growing population. So there's literally probably a shortage of built homes, not necessarily just people who want to sell them. So I think you're going to probably, uh, in the next 10 years, probably see a big building boom in, in certain areas too, just depending as, as yeah, areas. I, think builders are be I have a theory on that. I think people are, are, so now I think there's going to be a shift. You know, we were, we were shifting into downtown areas. People wanted to be close. They want a walkability. They want, and I think there's going to be a certain population of people that still want that. But I think there's going to be a, a change again going back to the suburbs where people have land. But that's that secondary. Mark, I wanted to ask you a question. This is really poignant because we were talking about technology, the iBuyer and all that. Do you think real estate agents get paid too much right now? Do you think we're going to have margin compression on that side of it? Um, Are you overpaid, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's one of the, uh, you know, when you're in sales and you're an independent contractor, everybody counts your paycheck, right? Yeah, but yeah. nobody ever counts the checks, nor ever counts the work that you never got paid for. That's the difference between being your own boss true. and mm -hmm. being a W two employee. For when you're a W two employee, you get paid for every hour, and you get paid double time for the overtime. <laughs> That'd be great if we got that, wouldn't it? <laughs> do, yeah, do we get that? Does anybody care? Does anybody compensate us more because we're working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours? Yeah, absolutely not. And so, you know, no risk, no reward. I mean, that's that's why we get what we get. But again, um, it all comes down to in the absence of value, people question price. I always that's tell my thing. sales agents that. Yes. If you add enough value, you can charge like if you charge me a million bucks, but your value is two million. I'm good. Right. Right. It just you know, it just depends on what the value proposition is. And I agree with that. But there is something to be said for like, let's say um, listing a house. There's so many people coming out and they're like, oh, they'll come out and put a sign on your in your yard and uh, uh, put you in the MLS and then be market the way it is. The house might sell and they get paid for doing very little right now. I mean, potentially the, the market the way it is. Do you feel as though that we are going to see some 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 people, some agents, I mean, we already see it, but like that are going to start doing like super discounts or like, and then you almost have to compete with that. Uh, and in this market, some people might start doing that more and more because it is to be, if you have a good listing, it's going to move right now because of the, yeah. the way the market is, right? Yeah. You know, and that's, that's already, when the, the, yeah, it's happening, right? It, it's already happening. You know, it's already happening. But uh, I mean, our commissions yeah. haven't personally dropped. Uh, I network yeah. with realtors across the country. Um, you know, their commissions haven't dropped, but, you know, we all bring a lot of value, right? We're constantly stepping up our game. We're improving what we bring to the client. You know, our virtual tours have gotten better than they were a year or two years ago. Um, yeah. So, you know, again, if we can show that we can net them more money than the yeah, agent to, that's the bottom line. To, yeah, I mean, then then you win. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, some of the things that we're working on is we're trying to create the experience so it's it, it it it's more like a franchise. You know, the reason why franchises are successful is when you go to uh, when you go to Shake Shack, you know what that burger is going to taste like, right? And I yeah, feel like yeah. uh, the the real estate industry. It's uh, it, it's a complete opposite. Of that you don't know what you're getting yourself into, and every realtor operates different. And so, um, you know, we're trying to make this so when you work with our team, the experience is the same from the start until the end. You know, everything yeah. happens in the same manner. No matter which agent you're working with on our team, you have the same experience. So we're working on yeah. putting systems in place. Um, we're about seventy five percent there. Um, we're going to pull this thing off this year. And so when we when we pull that off, we're going to be light years ahead in the industry. And it's going to be uh, um, more of a franchise experience so we can control the experience from start to end. Yeah. You know, Mark, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's, 
in like you said, like today's day and age, right? For someone to choose to work with you when all they can do, they could plug their name and, and email and phone number into a form and get 30 calls, right? All these different agents, all these different lenders, like it feels good when someone chooses you, right? Like you, like you did something right and like, you know what you're doing. And over time you, you build that into a habit, which you have to teach others how to do, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mark, Mark as, a, as a consumer, I want to find a real estate agent, right? And that's the, the another issue is they don't really know where to go. Obviously you've done a great job marketing. So you probably get a lot of people coming through, but as a consumer, what should a consumer be looking for? What are the things that are important that they don't even you know? A lot of times, consumers don't even know what is going is important. They might talk to someone, they give them a nice little song and dance, and they end up working with them, but they just had a song and dance. So, how does a consumer make sure that they're working with someone that's legitimate, that is actually a pro, and that's going to have their best interest in mind? Um, you know, it's no different than uh, than anything you vet, right? You got to go through the interview process. Um, you know, ask the right questions. Um, and, uh, I always tell my salespeople, you know, show them, don't tell them they need yeah. to show you, yeah. you know, how you're going to, how they're going to net you more money, how they're going to put you in front of more people. Um, and then, uh, you know, the consumer is obviously going to see the difference between, um, you know, the discount broker and the broker who's, uh, getting what you pay for. Perfect. Last question. Then we'll go to our three questions. I mean, not three questions into the part of the thing. I wanted to ask you for, as far as your, I mean, you're, you've done a really good job in Metro Detroit marketing, right? You, you, you've this, you, you went full saturation for a while. You're, I mean, you're on the radio billboards and all that. Does this market or this situation change your marketing strategy? Are you looking at, you know, does that change your marketing spend? How is your marketing from a, from a real estate agent standpoint? How are you looking at your marketing going forward from here? Great question. Uh, you know, you got two options right now. Do you just jump straight in or do you ramp it up? Um, you know, and uh, that's what we always uh, go back and forth with right now is, um, you know, how much do you put in? I mean, are we over this? Are we not? Uh, I don't know. I'm seeing um, I'm seeing two different viewpoints as to, you know, what's really different right now than 60 days ago, as far as this, you yeah. know, the whole reason why we, we went on lockdown, right? Um, you know, nothing's changed except the fact that we're probably more conscious of what's out there. Uh, we're more clean. We're taking uh, a lot more precautionary measures. Um, but yeah. you know, you gotta, it's the old marketing, you know, you gotta, you gotta fish when the fish are swimming. So right. we're, we're, we're going to go in, um, we're going to go in with some blind faith and, uh, pick back up where we were, um, and, uh, and take this, uh, take this industry by storm this year. Yeah. So, all right. Well, so I want to, I want to get you off cause I know you got a lot of things. You're a busy guy. Uh, so we're going to do our three questions. We do it on every episode. Uh, did we do it last time you were on the show? Were we doing it then or no? Uh, do you remember? I don't remember. I don't Maybe. think we did. I don't think we did. Okay. Uh, first question I'll ask you is what scares Mark Z? What is the one thing that like scares you most? Is it, it could be metaphysical. It could be physical, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, what scares me is, uh, I wake up every day and I feel like it, it could be my last day. Um, I had an incident with my heart where uh, um, oh, shit. I, I had a, con I had a condition called Brugada. It was uh, it's an irregular heartbeat. And oh, wow. uh, sorry to hear that, man. Yeah. I ended up uh, getting a pacemaker put in. So I'm supposed to oh, be like the here, bionic dude. man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, but I'm supposed to be like the bionic man. Now they say that uh, they say that um, my heart's going to outlive my entire body now. Um, because I want this, it. Uh, this, I need yeah, that. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it I is. always feel like uh, anyone that knows Mark Z knows that I'm, I'm racing the clock every day. You know, I don't walk to the copy machine. I run to the copy machine every second of the day, every minute of the day. You know, I'm racing that clock from start to finish from the time I get up. Um, I'm up from 435 in the morning. Um, I go to bed by, uh, you know, maybe between uh, 10:30, 30, 11:30 30 at night. Uh, you know, I'm on five, six hours of sleep, but you know, I can't sleep more than that. The, it's always going. So I always feel like I'm racing the clock. Um, I don't got no time yeah. to spare. I don't have a minute to spare. Um, so yeah. that's uh, that's what worries me is that uh, I'm on borrowed time. Did you take a, a moment during this whole thing to like take a breath, or did you just like for uh, for me personally and our team and Sal and Brad like when this all all this stuff went down, we actually worked way harder. Cause I have felt like, like I had an opportunity to out, out someone like, I, I always feel like I'm in a race. Like you said, I feel like someone's chasing me down and yeah. I felt like people were taking, like taking a step back and I could, if I ran, I could get ahead. You know what I mean? That's how. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, 
Yeah, you my know. wife is complaining now. She's like, you know, you've been home, but uh, I've seen you less yeah. since you've been home than, than when you're at work, <laughs> right? Yes, uh, yes, yeah. Because because you got to stay in touch with people a lot more when you don't see them, you know, regularly. Correct. You're on the phone all day, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, I haven't slowed down one single bit. Uh, in fact, I, I probably ramped okay, it up fine. because I was scared I was gonna um, lose more time. Yeah. Um, you guys have a question you want to ask? You guys have it in your head? Okay, I'll, I'll ask one if you guys want to think of one. If you could spend a week in one other person's body, who'd it be and why? Man, easy question. My uh, my childhood mentor, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, man. Um, oh, wow. You know, that would be bad. You know, when I was a kid, I, <laughs> let me tell you why. When I was a kid, I've always looked up to him. And then as an adult, I look back and think, man, what a salesman that guy was. That guy, everybody, oh, yeah. everybody knew that wrestling was fake, but yet you were still, you were still, you know, just, it made, you know, you forgot everything going on around you. You were into that match. You were into that fight. It was like a soap opera. You know, people watch soap operas. You know, it's not real, but you can't wait for the next episode. Right. And the Brother, way that, Hulk, yeah. the way that Hulk Hogan captivated a crowd, um, it sounds silly, but man, he was the ultimate salesperson, right? He made you believe, you know, in the storyline. He captivated that crowd. Bro, when, he, when, he, when he fought Macho Man Randy Savage, and he, and he and remember Randy Savage had the, like the cage. Remember, those were some. Cri I used to watch it all the time back then. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or Andre the Giant. I mean, you know, those were man. Remember when he slammed Andre? He picked him up. Picked him up and body slammed him, right? And uh, and so when you, pounds. But, but but think about it a little bit deeper. If you could energize your team and energize and, and get them to believe and, and sell them. I mean, ultimate salesperson, man. Yeah. Nobody, I don't think anybody since him has ever um, taken that industry to the level of, of where he took it. And, uh, and if you think about the it, the rock did a pretty good job. The rock did a pretty good job. Let's be honest. Rock, yeah, uh, rock, Wayne Johnson, he did all right. Rock did awesome. And then Hulk always gives him props, uh, you know, because how he came in and, you know, he's a great actor. Yeah. Um, you know, he did great, but um, he's a good job, man. yeah, love to be in is, all right. I mean, that's, a, that's the I first time. Are you a Hulkamaniac? Are you a Hulkamaniac? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's That'd awesome. Fun, though, man. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, all right. That's really funny. Uh, you guys have another, you guys have a question? I got to come up with them all. I'll do it. What if, uh, if, okay, go ahead. If you could be one animal. What would it be? Oh, easy. One animal in the animal kingdom. King of the sea. I'm going to be that shark. Yeah, you got a I shark tank in your office. Yeah, 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 yeah we asked it. him that. Yeah, 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 we already asked him that. I think we asked him that. Is one. it a baby the shark, shark yeah. or a daddy shark? Uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the big white shark, man. I'm not leaving anything for anybody else. I'm going out. I'm the predator. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm killing what I'm, I'm eating what I'm killing. Daddy shark. Shark, do, 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 Absolutely. Uh, all right. La last question. If you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, and you you can you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Man, uh, probably cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers? Yeah. So that's why you have the heart burgers, condition, man. dude. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why. That's probably it. But, man, uh, you know, every restaurant I go to, I love to take uh, – I love to have a cheeseburger because everyone – you know, every burger is a little different. Where's your yeah. favorite cheeseburger? Um, believe it or not, one of my favorites uh, is uh, is Shake Shack, Five Guys. You know, um, you know, Red, Red Coat you, Tavern has some great burgers. Red Coat I, is awesome, dude. Right? If you're on Red the Coat. east side, check out Atkins. Atkins? Atkins Burger. Atkins. A T H A T Z. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Little hole in the wall. Some of the best burgers you can get. So, uh, l listen, Mark. I'm, we're gonna let you go. We'll stay on, but Mark, I. I I appreciate you coming on the show. I know you're a really busy guy. Can you tell the, the audience how they can they can find you? Find me on uh, Instagram, man. That's the best way to find me. Uh, it's at Sold by Mark Z. Uh, I got a, if you're a realtor out there uh, and you're not following my channel, uh, you're missing out. I put out uh, great training videos almost every day. Um, we're putting out some great content. Uh, Instagram at Sold by Mark Z. Find me on Instagram. One of my favorite posts you did was when you were like, like you did a video thing and you walked away and you're in your underwear. It was awesome. Oh yeah. 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 That was real too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mark, thank you so much, brother, for, for doing the show. God bless you. Uh, hopefully you and the family uh, keep that pacemaker going uh -huh. and, and we really appreciate
appreciate you taking the time to do the show with us, man. It, it's I, awesome. I, I, I'm honored. I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, you know, you guys are top of your industry and uh, for you guys to have me on and, and, uh, and look to have uh, my advice. I appreciate it. It's always great talking to you guys and catching up and uh, you know, let's do this again it. in a few months. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's touch base. Have a good one, man. God bless. You we'll too. talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you guys. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.